Hello again, everyone. This is part two of the highlights of the Esri Maps for Office 2.0 release. This time we're going to focus on some of the advanced spatial analysis capabilities and options that are available in the new release. My name is Tony and I'm on the Location Analytics team here at Esri. And I'm excited to show you these new features in Esri Maps for Office 2.0, which is releasing at our 2013 Esri Partner Conference and Developer Summit in Palm Springs, California. Let's get started. So uh, you saw in the uh, previous video that I took a, this list of IAG coffee shop locations in California and geocoded them or um, mapped those, that those addresses to uh, uh, locations on this map. But this time I mixed it up a little bit. I changed the base map to an image-based base map which offers a uh, different kind of context in this sense, uh, context from aerial imagery and satellite imagery. Um, and I am also representing the annual sales estimates differently. This time I'm using a color ramp. So as you can see, uh, going from green to red, we can represent the different sales, annual sales estimate or volume associated with each of these coffee shop locations. Um, the focus this, on this video is about some of the newer spatial analysis capabilities. Um, and uh, part of that spatial analysis involves being able to select, interactively select features, either from the table view or from the map view. Um, fortunately, Esri Maps for Office 2.0 offers several options for selecting uh, mapped features. Um, one of those options is to actually um, use the table itself, so I can click on um, row or rows and right click on my mouse and I can go to that selection or I can actually select that location on the map. Um, I can also um, select individual map locations and there's a select row um, uh, link um, um, in this, this pop-up this attribute based pop-up which I can use to select the, the location. And then finally there is this new select tool up here in the Esri Maps tab within the Excel ribbon. And it allows me to select one or more features from the uh, from whatever layer that I have enabled. Um, so I'm going to actually leverage this competition um, sheet of data that I have within my Excel it consists of hundreds and hundreds, almost a couple of thousand uh, competitor coffee shop locations within the state of California. Um, and it, um, I'm going to add that competitor layer to my existing map. So like I did before, I'm going to add Excel data. I'm going to actually change the sheet this time to the competition sheet. Um, I'm going to geocode the addresses again. And what I didn't mention on the first video was the fact that not only can I geocode US based addresses, but if I have the proper data, I can uh, geocode addresses from several different countries around the world because the ArcGIS platform has content and services supporting geocoding um, addresses in several different countries. So for example, instead of city zip code in the United States, if I chose the UK, I might have address fields consisting of locality and post town and county. Um, so that offers all kinds of flexibility for different types of use cases, whatever um, your local source data may be. Um, so let's go ahead and add that competition data layer and it's kicked off the uh, geocoding operation and you'll see it dynamically populate the map with my locations and you can see right away that clustering was automatically enabled because there are so many features and again as I mentioned in the previous video clustering is a visualization tool that aside from making a, a lot cleaner map um, it offers additional context so, um, if I zoom out these clusters kind of coalesce into bigger clusters, which is really cool. If I zoom out far enough, California becomes one mega cluster. And then when I zoom in, these clusters kind of collapse. Um, again, it's, it's, a, it's a better way to visualize the data 
instead of seeing several thousand points on the map, which may obscure the uh, other features and content. In this case, um, for this base map, I actually want to change the uh, cluster color because the red is a bit strong. And maybe increase the cluster size to 50 here. Okay. You can see there are definitive regions now. Um, because we have Southern California, Northern California, and Central California. Alright, now um, let me go ahead, now that we have the two layers on um, the map, I'm going to use the select tool. And again, what I want to do here is I want to do uh, spatial based selection. In this case, something that would be very difficult to do in just Excel with just Excel table based Excel data. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually determine what competitors are within 1,000 feet of all of my IG locations in California, which are, there are 48 locations. As I said, I can select individual locations through the table or through the map, um, or I can use the select tool and select all of them simultaneously. So let me actually change the background map to this light gray canvas. And you can see all of these selected uh, IG locations now. Okay, and I'm going to click on this Find Near Selection tool. I can actually query the same layer, but in this case I'm going to query the competitor layer. And I'm looking now 1,000 feet from my competitors, and I'm going to select all the competitors simultaneously there with 1,000 at the end. You can see in seconds it completed the operation. Um, now actually if I click on the competitor layer I can see that 18 of my competitors had the nerve to locate within 1,000 feet of my um, existing IEG locations in California. The nerve of them, right? Well, um, what I can do now is I can actually view these selected records, or I can export these uh, selected records and maybe deliver them to my competitive analysis department within my organization, or, or do other types of analysis. In this case, um, I'll just show you um, what it looks like. So I can turn off the uh, competitor layer here. If I, um, if I zoom in to, San, let's say, San Diego here, um, And let's turn off clustering for the time being. And maybe let's give you some street-based map context. All right. You can see that the IG locations are located in the center of these 1,000-foot uh, rings. Um, these 1,000-foot rings were calculated and mapped for every one of my locations in, in those few seconds that you saw previously. And then you can see the, my competitors now. And incidentally, who is my competitor here? Ah, there is some coffee shop that starts with an S um, at this location. And at this location, there is another coffee shop that starts with an S. Um, I can do some further analysis now with that. Like I said, I can pass it on to my competitive analysis team or, or the such. And it's beautiful that I have these... Uh, uh, these new layers, but um, the result of the analysis was there are 18 competitors in the state of California to my IEG locations, which are located within 1,000 feet of my IEG stores. Thank you very much.